Okay, welcome everyone. We are Alex and myself, Aaron, and we are from, from Forceflow, and we are talking about RMAs and repair. All right, if you don't know about the applications, uh, it's fine. We are going to talk about the basics, and then we are going to talk about what is new in the applications. So let's start. Um, okay, just to be clear, for the RMA, we are talking about the stock RMA repository in Forgeflow in GitHub. For repair, we are talking about the standard uh, repair application in, in Odoo, plus the OCA modules. Uh, we, uh, Forgeflow, have uh, contributed uh, a lot on, on the migration, on, on the modules, and the new features. Okay, the basics. Um, what is an RMA? Well, basically, uh, um, the customer receives the product and there is a complaint and the customer wants to return the product and there is a customer service and at the end, the company um, um, let the customer to return the product back to the company. So that's a formal authoriz authorization, okay? Okay, mm, that's fine. Uh, we had uh, what, is, what was there uh, in the community, what was there everywhere, and we had tools to just um, create uh, a document when you can just return, uh, do refunds, and deliver back to the, cost to the customer. That was cool, but there are, are many re different requirements from dif many different companies in different um, um, business. And we had to, to start thinking about evolving that, that application. What are those requirements? Uh, first, um, what is if the sales order is not in Odoo? Or for some reason, maybe you migrate from a uh, different system Maybe the, it was never entered for some reason, or you just cannot find it. Why you are you blocking the users to, to start um, entering the RMA? You shouldn't. Uh, another reason. Uh, you send the product to the customer. The customer wants to return to us, but maybe the customer is too far away. Maybe the product is cheap and it is very expensive to pay for the return. So why are you forcing the, the system to create a return if you don't want it? Um, also, uh, drop shipments. Um, you reach an agreement with the vendor and you want the customer to send the products back to the vendor uh, in one step. And you also want to create your your RMA, your, your own RMA with your, your vendor. You can, you should be able to do that. Also, mm, it was kind of a tight workflow. So you are forced to receive, you are forced to refund or deliver, or, or maybe uh, add anything uh, on top of that. But you are forced. You cannot change once you approve the RMA. Why? Maybe some some changes in the, during the evaluation of the product. <clears throat> also, maybe it's a big order and there are many products in, uh, in an order and you want to repair one, to refund for the other, and to create an upsell for the other. So that's uh, another, another requirement. And also distribution. Maybe you receive uh, assembly products in one location, then you move them to a repair location, you receive um, another kind of products in a different location, and you should be able to do that and configure that uh, previously uh, in the system. Okay, all that is possible uh, in the Army application. Uh, you don't have to believe me. Uh, we will show you later in the, in the demo, okay? <clears throat> okay, and now uh, we have received different requirements once the application is more stable, and those are the, the main ones. Uh, 
from the, in the logistics, um, we have introduced um, a route by warehouse by default. So if you decide to, to do RMAs in a warehouse, you have to configure routes you can use. And you have um, a specific RMA location where to receive the products. And that works out of the box. And you can configure that route. Mm, previously, it was kind of in some route um, that was uh, used in the entire system, and it was not used at all anywhere. Of course, you have to customize that route, but some part of the work is already done. Um, a typical case is you receive a broken product or very, um, you cannot actually repair it. So, so you have to scrub it some, somehow. You can do it from the RMA now. You don't, you don't have to, to go to the inventory application for that. <coughs> also, um, you have a route in, in RMA, in the, your configuration, your operations, that you want in a um, configurable uh, you, you want to configure uh, how to create put away rules. So you want to receive everything in one location and configure rules depending on, on your operations and move directly the products from the RNA. So once you receive, you put away the products to the proper location and you have uh, separated the, the tickets in the, in the RNA uh, document. Okay, that's about logistics now in accounting. Uh, that is not actually an improvement, that is a fix. So we got a problem. What happens if you uh, say uh, the car on, on the top and then you um, yeah, get the, the, cap, the car on of the bottom uh, instead? So the cost is different. So uh, you are going to you are actually earning money or losing money, so mm, that is not going to, to, to make the accountant happy, so mm, we got a big issue with that, and the customer calls us angry, and we got, got to correct all the figures there. But at the end, uh, we made it uh, correctly. So we ensure in, uh, when you use real-time inventory evaluation that you are going to re receive the same product that goes away. So this is not happening um, in a standard rule because you are going to receive the, f the first product that came out if you use a first in, first out uh, um, inventory evaluation um, Inventory method policy. <coughs> so I have to say I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to fix it, and we are going to implement uh, something so it, it does not happen again. So uh, at the end, uh, we have uh, implemented a tool where not only the RMA, uh, RMA is in the journal items, but also you can see what is um, in the inventory interim accounts. What is pending to be uh, what is pending to be reconciled, so you can uh, in advance uh, detect those issues. Um, uh, another thing to point out is that uh, this Kanban uh, view that gets an overview for the support team. Uh, what is the status of the RMA in a single look, and you can also automate uh, the change in the status depending on, on the company their policies um, they using um, automated actions. So I think that's uh, quite uh, nice. Uh, okay, uh, that's all for improvements. Uh, let's jump into the repair application. Okay, our next topic are the repairs. Uh, a repair is basically the process of restoring something. We have a product that has been damaged or it's detected and we want to take it back into good conditions. Sure. 
So what can we do in the standard Udo repair app? When we create a repair order, we can select the product that we want to create, then uh, add or remove parts. For example, if we want to repair a table that has one leg broken, uh, we, we could add one table leg. Also, we can add operations, uh, repair services, and once the repair order is confirmed, we can start the process, repair the product, and then the repair will end. Also, we can invoice it, and once the repair is done, we can view the stop move that has caused uh, that repair order. So now we are going to see the improvements that we, we have done in order to make the repair app more functional. First of all, we are going to talk about the repair types. We realize that in, in companies, many times, uh, some repairs have the same procedures. And that means that for different products, always we are going to take the parts from the same locations. Another thing to consider is that uh, there, there are different types of repairs. It's not the same of assembling a product than changing one part of it. So to cover that, uh, we introduce a module in order to create repair types where you could uh, define the source and destination location for the parts that will be add or removed, and also add a custom sequence prefix in order to have a better classification of the products. Uh, another thing that occurs in companies is that, for example, customers don't want to contract the repair. They just want to buy the parts or the components that they need for doing the repair and repair it by themselves. In that case, we introduce a, a new feature that uh, allows to create a sales order directly from the repair app. In that case, uh, the company will sell the spare parts to the customer and he will repair it by himself. Uh, once the sales order is, is confirmed, the repair is done. Now I'm going to introduce the concept of refurbished products. We work with a company that was specialized in the manufacture of 3D printers. And in the case of this company, when a 3D printer was returned by one customer, uh, because it was damaged, defective, and was under warranty, this company sends to the customer a new one. And with the one that the customer has sent to them, they refurbish to later sell it. In that case, we introduce this feature when that uh, in the product template, we can define a refurbished product. As you can know, it's not the same to sell a new product than a one that has been refurbished. So for that, we could create a new product that could, see, could be a 3D printer uh, refurbished. And on the product template of the 3D printer, we could uh, define that if a repair is done by that, by, by that product and is set to be refurbished, once the repair is done, that product will be the refurbished product. Also, another feature that we introduced is that when we confirm a repair order, for example, uh, in order to repair a 3D printer, uh, we need several parts. So when we confirm the repair order, draft stop moves are created in order to uh, reserve those parts. Once the repair has a start, those stop moves are confirmed. And when the repair is done, uh, that stop moves are complete. And now, once we have repaired the 3D printer and it has been refurbished, we could say, oh, I want to send it to the location where we stock all the refurbished products. So we also add a new uh, feature in to allow to create transfers directly uh, from the repair app. 
in that case, we could well, create a transfer and send the refurbished 3D printer to the refurbished locations. In the accounting file, another, another uh, thing that companies face up, uh, especially with uh, customers from the US, it was that, that the taxes are computed depending on the address and the state, is that they could not inform the real cost of the repairs unless they create an invoice. To avoid that, we introduce a module that computes taxes in the repair app and this allows companies to inform of the real cost of the repairs uh, without having to create an invoice. Uh, well, and also, as Aaron uh, explained in the case of the RMIs, um, we also introduced uh, that feature with the repairs that we introduced a model that uh, relates the repairs with the journal items in order to help accountants, accountants in the stock valuation for companies that use a real inventory valuation. Uh, last but not least, uh, we also see that the users from the stock could also access to the river app. And this is something that should not happen. There is no reason that for stock users to access to, re to the river app. So for this, we create a, a model that adds security groups for the river app and that groups are exclusive for the river app. And now we are going to do a demo. Okay, um, so in this demo, we are going to do an army that we are going to, to repair. So you can see all the features in one demo example, okay? Uh, here we have the army application, which is this icon here. Um, and first, I'm going to show how to configure it. You maybe see that mm, there are many things to configure, but it is easier than it seems, okay? <laughs> So you can decide where to, where to receive, when to receive, when to deliver, when, what carrier to use, what, if you are going to upsell, if, if in case of returns to vendor, when, where to purchase, whatever you want. This is some guidelines. This is not forcing the user. Mm. You can start with this configuration and then something happens in during the process and maybe the product is in a different condition you can change it. And even if you don't change it, the system will let you to operate to create purchase orders, sales orders, whatever you want. It, this is just a guideline for the user. You can also configure here the route, uh, the forward house, the default locations, put away, put away strategies. Uh, there are a, a section for the repair, whatever you want. Okay, that, that, that is not anything that the user is going to, to, to do. Once the, all the policies are configured in the system, that is straightforward. So if you create an RMA, you just need to select here the customer. Then you can either select the product if you have it, or you have just the sale order number, you just uh, select the sale order number. And the, um, everything is pre-configured to the defaults. In this case, the, the default operation for this product is repair and return. Okay. So as a customer service user, I don't have to do anything else. I just request approval and then just waiting for, for receiving the, the package from, from the customer. I, I will print the label, I will send it to the, my email to the customer. At the, at the end, I am going to receive an incoming shipment. Uh, 
Okay, that's it. I have received it in the RM location, but I am going to repair it in a different location. So now, the system is telling me, okay, you can do whatever you want, but if you follow the guidelines, you are, you better to, <laughs> to, to move the products to a repair location. So you just move the products to the repair location, which in this case is this one. And that's it. So <coughs> you've seen here uh, uh, some of the new features, uh, the putaways, the um, uh, reconcile your items for your time for evaluation. And if you are used to use application, you have seen that there are some, some news here. You have now order dates in the RMA, and some other things, but uh, we want to focus on the main improvements we, we talk, talk about, okay? Uh, so now uh, we are ready to go for, for the repair, so we just, just create the repair. Um, there are some pre-configuration here that is taken from the operation we did before. So this is, this is a policy in our company, this is not just whatever default value. So we have the repair here and now we can just start repairing. Okay, so now we have the repair created. Some of the files are out of field uh, from the RNA. Uh, here we could choose the repair type, for example, uh, we, we choose the furniture type. As you can see, uh, some of the locations are out of field and if we save, the prefix sequence will, will change. Um, now we could add uh, some parts, for example, if, if he has a leg broken, we could add a table leg in order to repair it. Um, now, another feature that I told you in the presentation it was the tax computation. We could compute the, the taxes. And as you see, the taxes are automatically filled. And once we have the repair, we can confirm it. That will create draft stop moves uh, from the parts that are needed from the repair. We could start the, the repair process and those stocks moves were, will be confirmed. Once the product is repaired, uh, we just end the repair. Oh. We, we have to add a serial number. And the stock move will be complete. Now we could create an invoice of that repair order. That well, you can see it here. And uh, and now, once the product has been repaired, we are going to transfer it into the RMA <coughs> location. We create the transfer. And Okay, so now the transfer is here to be uh, sent back to the RMA location when the products are ready to go back to the customer, so we can just validate it. <coughs> so now we can go back to the RMA, we have here the link to the, sorry, the repair order, here in the repair order uh, I have the link to the RMA. So everything is connected and, and you can go back and forth all the time. And now the create delivery button is uh, highlighted because the system is expecting you to, to do that. But again, you can do whatever you want. It's, the system is not forcing the user any to do 
anything uh, that uh, the user don't want. So yeah, we just deliver to, to the customer and that's all. <coughs> so to sum up, uh, we have here some logistics improvements. You have a, a route that is uh, pretty functional in every warehouse, new warehouse you create. You have put away rules to move to the different repair locations. And uh, also you have uh, accounting tools, so you ensure that your inventory evaluation is uh, correct. Um, here you have an overview of what is done, what is going to be done if you are a customer service user. And uh, as my colleague said, uh, in the repair application there are different tools to distinguish between the different kind of, the different types of repair. Um, um, to, to, to have the, the own logistics and, and, and workflow in the, in the business. So that's uh, all we wanted to show in this demo. So thank you, yes, for attending and here. <laughs> Are there are any questions? Yes? Um, at the beginning, you said that the RMA module was in before still resolved. Is it because it's different from the RMA OPA? Yes, yes. That is kind of a long story. Uh, we wanted first to, to improve the existing application in the RMA, which is not the same that this is available now. The original authors uh, didn't like that idea. At the end, we put it in there. Nothing migrated the existing OCA RMA to the newer versions, and at the end, another, another company mm, developed a new RMA from scratch that is in the OCA, which is kind of different. Um, and they are both. <laughs> Yes, exactly, yes. We wanted to integrate everything, so uh, I am also introducing here uh, some the, the warranty information, what, what was not there before, and this is using a base module, this in the CA Army uh, um, repository. But uh, anything else is kind of uh, not compatible. <laughs> Thank you. Yes? What do you do on the inventory evaluation and the idea of the Yes. Um, so if you look at the configuration in the product category in this product, um, it is used using a standard price. Uh, and inventory evaluation automated. It, it is not using first in, first out, but if you use first in, first out, it came out that the product that left the company two years ago uh, had a different cost than now. Um, and there, uh, you sell several cars, and at the end, you are going to receive back a car that is new. But the system is, is putting back the, the old car you, s you sold two years ago with totally different cost. So that was causing uh, an incorrect inventory evaluation because you were receiving different valuation. That's quite one thing. And the other is, okay, you receive something in exchange of, of uh, something. So you receive inventory evaluation in exchange of would receive, not invoice. You need to, to do something with that. And at the end, when you deliver, that would receive, not invoice, is going to be balanced. So you have uh, this information uh, in the journal items. So now you don't see any button here because this is balanced. But if you go here into the journal items and search by, by this RMA, uh, well, uh, I see the filter is not there, but 
the information is there for sure. Uh, I am a line. And you can see that interim account is balanced by by RMA. So if at some point you go by RMA and you see anything is unbalanced, there is an issue in accounting. So uh, anything else? <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>